similar experiences. Um, let me just start to research and take this further. Um, but also, you know, you know I, I'm a jazz musician and I've played in church, so I'm always looking at that intersection between jazz and spirituality. And I just had a, a problem with scholars limiting it to Ellington and Coltrane as being this I knew that black women had voice what they thought was their spirituality in their music. And so, you know what, it has brought me into a deeper sense of introspection about my work, but it's also made me really look deeply at how we define spirituality, uh, how we as women cre have to create a narrative of freedom and a liberation that moves beyond the traditional you know, dogma and the traditional um, things that are taught to us within the church. Because I think still, even though we, we constitute the majority of congregants in our churches, we've still preached uh, a theology of oppression. You know, we are still, um, we're still not acknowledged as being vessels that can be used by God. So it's transformed the way that I see my role on Sunday morning as a minister of music. So I'm not just a piano player anymore, you know, that I see myself as, is in many ways ministering to the women that I see out there, but also providing an example where you can move outside of those traditional roles that we've been limited to. I might get out. I think the most important thing for both of those women is that, you know, they, um, they knew enough to, um, to listen to the wiser, older, and mature women in their lives when they were young. And so it allowed them to develop a very strong foundation and sense of self um, so that um, when they moved beyond the safety of the community and the safety of the sister circles that developed around them, they, they were so strong in their sense of self that um, no matter what critics, no matter what um, people said that was negative against them, be it their appearance, because they, you know, they talked about those things in terms of, of women in you know, popular culture. You know, you're defined by how you look, how you carry yourself. And so when they didn't measure up to other people's standards, it did not cause them in any way to compromise who they were or their sense of self. And so I think, you know, women, especially in hip hop, uh, it's so important that women do not align themselves with narratives and rhetoric that are about destroying the essence of who they are. You know, that we can't, we can't think that we can take the word, we can't take the word bitch and empower ourselves by using it that will never empower us. It only makes us less than when we take words like that and we use them to personify ourselves. But what we have to do is we have to construct 
stronger senses of black womanhood, whether you young or old, that, that emanate a statement of grace, that emanate self-respect and strength, no matter what you encounter. And of course, faith in God, because without him, you're not gonna be able to operate in those things. Pearl of Wisdom, I'm gonna take it from the scripture that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's from Psalms 139. And I think that, they ha that, that we have to remind ourselves of that because in those words you are fearfully and wonderfully made. It, it's, it is an inferring that God has uniquely made you to be you, which means that you don't have to be anyone else. You don't have to talk like anyone else. You don't have to dress like anyone else or walk like anyone else because God has crafted you to be you. Find who you are in Him, and when you find who you are in Him, you have found the threshold to everything else that you think is important in life.